Okay, um, in all fairness, I should add a little segment here where I, I left it, I was going to leave it at eventually war becoming uh, dealt with as something that we will understand why has humanity um, always, you know, uh, what, what has, in any case, I explained that. I explained that we wouldn't arrive to, we wouldn't start by finding how to deal, how to include war and guy of humanism thinking or uh, the pol a political philosophy about it, but because of the process, this construction process that I was just, I just made that video about, we would come to find out what were the reasons for us to uh, end up having war as part of um, countries governments or whatever okay and so when I did that um, I started talking about Malvinas Falklands and I you know I got to where I started saying in Spanish what Malvinas means to me is or if you ask what Malvina means to me then I would say kind of little um, ex expansion into it and I didn't say it in English like everything else had been done so well uh, so I thought I would I, in, all, in all fairness I would um, I would add it and then just t attach it somehow to the post um, what does Malvinas uh, Falklands uh, Falkland Islands represent to me to me the the Falklands Malvinas situation represents um, something that has to do with what humanity proposes itself. It has to do with what humanity proposes itself as a world. A world of, of uh, in which we have arrived, we have evolved into our political thinking diplomacy, which has always existed. It existed, you know, even, I'm sure somebody always spoke up right before they went to battle and tried to talk it out before we killed each other. But it really came to a formal uh, outcry by humanity with more so than with the uh, creation of the League of Nations, but with the creation of the United States, which, oh, sorry, <laughs> with the creation of the United Nations. <laughs> um, and, um, you know, which started out lofted and skewed and uh, governed by invested interests and so forth that we all know about, I don't want to get into, but um, still it is, we can see in, in, a, in a progressive um, sequence of evolution that humanity really is trying to get to higher grounds by uh, wanting diplomacy to be part of it. And what is diplomacy? Diplomacy is basically that we avoid killing each other, going to war, and talk about things first that's we have established that that is our first desire obviously because war has always been murderous and chaotic and a problem uh, of which we have built around ways of taking advantage of what have you but um, the the same heart the same mind of humanity must mean more intently and more seriously for uh, diplomacy to to take the place of war and that I think everybody anybody that doesn't just want to argue and fight against what I'm saying would have to agree with we that seems to be the the idea that we want diplomacy to substitute war and there have been movies <laughs> created about uh, movies made about uh, sports substituting war um, you know <laughs> sci-fi movies um, so in um, in 18, before 1833, Spain and England were um, elbowing each other over these islands for their colonial, imperialist, expansionist, geopolitical positioning themselves, fighting each other, taking more as much of the world as possible reasons. Not because they wanted to bring people there. That has to be really well understood. That Britain and Spain wanted to possess these islands for reasons that had to do with their colonial empires. Along, uh, they, you know, they 
kept letting go of them and they didn't think it was they were that important and you know and would just write it down just you know it's easy to write something down right and say well they are ours you know we don't have to fight for them and we don't have anybody live there but we're colonial empires we don't have to do that well anyways so the islands were left kind of unattended and uh, um, anarchical you could say people would come and will and the Argentinians that were coming f were starting from a different uh, point in world history they were creating their nation at the time that these European ideas were talking about um, constitutional republic democratic representation by the people uh, against uh, hating you know the uh, monarchical tyrannical governments of Europe and you know the United States and Argentina were born out of the same kind of philosophical uh, bro soup <laughs> you could say um, and you know they the Spanish were there also and they were actually seemed to be have been more officially there or something to this effect but they were not present they had actually also vacated the islands before and the Argentina say hey, we beat the Spanish we get to now make our own country that was being administrated from Buenos Aires hey you know uh, they should be part of us they had too much on their plate already so it was hard for them to be very strong about that but that was the uh, political um, thought of these uh, they weren't uh, islands that they wanted to conquer and kick the Falkland Islanders the Falkland Islanders were not even there yet uh, England had no idea what it was going to do later in in 1945 after they kicked off the Argentinian modest um, um, you know, try to you know manage these islands somehow from one, continue managing them from Buenos Aires. So, what do the islands represent to me? They represent what humanity proposes to itself politically. It says, "Hey, we don't need to war; we have uh, diplomacy." So, what does uh, after um, after the British expel the Argentinian garrison and? lower their flag and, you know, ask them, you know, they do this whole... <sighs> Anyways, ask whoever does not want to abide by the Queen's wishes uh, to leave, invites them to leave, you know, so they want to they wanna say that this is not uh, invasive or, <laughs> you know, whatever. This... Anyways. Um, they kick off the... Ar they kick the Argentines off the islands and... Um, what do the Argentinians do? Immediately, like the following year, they present a formal protest, diplomacy. They present a formal protest to Britain. Now, what has Britain's attitude towards this protest for 150 years been, starting even before they brought the islanders to secure the islands against this dispute? Uh, one interpretation. Some may argue, I don't see that they wanted to do much with the islands other than keep the Argentinians off them, but, you know, they're going to argue that, whatever. Um, they say no. We're all the way to Cameron, you know. Sovereignty is not going to be discussed. We're not going to talk about it. So we're just going to do what we want to do, basically, which is military force. Because it's either military force or diplomacy. If a country says, we're not going to talk about this, it's not negotiable, uh, sovereignty is not on a on, on matter of discussion, basically you can say that because if anybody says, well, we're going to make it part of the discussion, they just pull out their guns and say, remember what I have, right? Otherwise, what would that demand be based on? other than uh, maybe wishful thinking that the Argentines are going to say, oh, okay, no, uh, it is military enforcement. And um, so the Argentinians, I just said this in Spanish, have all the reason in the world to be proud that they stuck to the premise of diplomatic engagement about the islands until the junta ruined their perfect record. Um, the Argentinians and and part of my uh, discourse to the Argentinians, I'm trying to translate what I said in Spanish, is that um, they 
they had their heart in the right place politically, um, and that it it saddens me terribly that the con the per cultural personality that could have resulted in a country come better uh, administration and some some uh, f good fruits for after they got rid of their junta for example that period with this spirit what could have come forth from this spirit of a peaceful nation that had no wars with anybody uh, have produced and which was ruined because after the uh, the British beat the junta the Argentinians did not ask for the war uh, and they um, they went of course and applauded the, the the junta not because they loved them <laughs> but because at least they did that and so hey we want to feel good everybody wants to feel good and they were happy that they addressed this age-old dispute but not because they wanted to invade the islands nobody if anybody understands this in Britain uh, it seems to me they're intentionally not wanting to say that okay uh, it's not so hard to understand uh, they and so what saddens me about the war what the war represents to me is diplomacy the importance of diplomacy and the worth in Argentina's record of never having gotten belligerent or militant or uh, militarily no military rhetoric for a hundred and fifty years it was always civilly maintained as something that needs to be addressed diplomatically and they should be proud of that until the junta spoiled that perfect track record they should be proud now not England because England uh, basically says yes we propose the League of Nations and the United Nations and everything but in this case throw all that out the window we use our guns here to keep what we want and so the Argentinians should feel good about this and but what saddens me is that um, after um, the you know the Argentinians they continue to have um, a peaceful, non-warring nation heart about their culture, and didn't immediately react with uh, "you're you're gonna you know we're gonna show you now it's you know it's on you know it's on now we're gonna uh, never forget this and be begrudged about it." No, it was the opposite. They, the the force, the momentum of this uh, beautiful aspect of their cultural heart continued through uh, the leaving of the junta and they never cared to make it a military thing but what does Britain do it maintains a military base and a posture a, a rhetoric that is confrontational getting the islanders to feel motivated and I have argued that it seems intentional also but you know a lot of things could one would think they it was they were by design but the result is the same the islanders find now a reason because before they didn't want to do anything with a couple of fish there and here maybe a, a penguin visit every few months but you know they weren't really making a nation they were uh, in overseas uh, kept territory they hate to admit this but let's face it if you have to compare Falkland Islands overseas territory nation that wants to go somewhere with its people you see two completely different situations of what the Falklanders were before the war the war served not not the war summit the war could have been just been a meteor meteorite a jungle could have grown where that meteorite fell or it could have been left desolated forever desolate forever it's after the war that the insistence on a a a, a now defined by the British culture confrontation with a new enemy a new permanent enemy Argentina that is not because they're not attacking once the junta left they just wished it hadn't happened you know but the British created this 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 definition this way of interpreting the situation that has led to the islanders all of a sudden feeling motivated to do everything everything is about being them British and having you know they're, they're, if it weren't for the enmity against the Argentinians they wouldn't um they wouldn't be as motivated to you know and and they still you know i'm getting i've never been there but you know it's that only the people with money 
that are connected to Britain are fighting these negotiations with um, the islander people probably just like the Argentinians continued in their good you know simple in their own version of islander compared to big nation uh, heart you know uh, and it is these people that have this sort of um, bellicose political ambition tied to money in Britain that are you know so it's still Britain being colonial <laughs> it's still being colonial about these and and so what do the islands represent um, you know the islands represent the the f sort of a, f a face off with humanity with uh, with humanity uh, a, hu a humanity's face off with itself of saying I want to be better but I can't I want to no longer war but I can't I'm just too I'm prey to wanting needing money and wanting to exploit situations and 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 taking advantage of my military power I'm sorry I can't but I would I wish I could be you know as as grand as some of the ideas I proposed and convince the world that it is what we are about um, and so this is where the Malvinas is born uh, conflict with uh, Britain is in, the, conf in the, the confrontation of a new nation like could have been America, Mexico, Venezuela, Brazil, uh, the United States, America, um, before the, the old world of tyranny. It's still happening <laughs> right there on the Malvinas. And so the, this is what the, to me, the island's conflict is about, is about humanity saying, okay, we recognize what our higher wish for the world is when we're, we're not, you know, abusing ourselves <laughs> and each other, but uh, through the use of our inventions and instruments and systems, but one where our heart, our human heart, is uh, calling forth how it wants to understand, interpret, and, and run the world. Um, yeah, so that's basically what the conflict is to me about. I said it a little differently in Spanish, uh, and i got to go now because my dog is climbing all over me. She wants to go out and use the bathroom. All right, thanks, and nothing. That's it. Ciao.